Free agency has been insane. A lot of you have been asking for me to break down Dynasty Angle. What does this mean for my team? Completely understandable. We're going to be getting into that and more. We're covering the main free agency moves today, their impact on your teams, what on earth happened with Justin Fields, and what free agents are left as we kind of roll into week two of this weird phase. Free agency deadline is done, and if you're joining, you notice I am not alone. We've got Mr. Michael Stenzlin in here for the first time. How are you doing, man? <laughs> yeah, Michael's a big friend of mine. Uh, we've called games together, you know, big broadcast background. And then Michael knows his way around a mic for a different reason. You are in music if you kind of want to go into that for a little bit. I'll be tossing it back and forth. We do have somebody in the chat. Um, Andy is wondering what kind of music. How would you? I'll let you answer that. Yeah, and you guys are kind of taking a cool approach, like step by step through your album, a new song every couple weeks. So Andy or anybody who's watching or listening right now, if you are interested, not only is Michael's sports pro or sports podcast, the link for that's in the description, that's no flags, but you can listen to the astronomers as well. We've got his YouTube page linked down there too. So if you're looking for some new music and you weren't expecting to see that today on this video, oh, well, I mean, go explore it, right? All right. And then we also do have the free discord in the description as well. So if you're looking for, not that I'm not on here all the time, I definitely do take my breaks though. If you want to go and just kind of get more immediate answers, I make it a habit to check the discord pretty much every day. You won't catch me being off that for more than 24 hours. So if you're in dynasty, especially right now, you have any drafting questions, free agency questions, Russell Wilson just got shipped to Pittsburgh. What do I do with that? I have wide receivers like George Pickens. Uh, drop those in there. I can answer for you. And then we've got about 10 other people in there as well who are usually pretty on top of it. So Andy likes it, says way cool, Michael. And um, if you guys are like a day one of this channel, like before we were armchair fantasy, before we were armchair athletes, we were called all sports now, probably like three or four years ago. Um, I doubt anybody remembers this, but if you do, by all means, like shout yourself out because then you're a true day one. Outro music used to be Michael's music. We'd use the astronomers all the time. So intro, outro. So there's a chance if you click on that link and start listening to their music, it might sound familiar. If it doesn't, highly recommend you try it out. So Michael, we've got a lot to jump into. I think free agency is usually pretty hectic, but this one, uh, I think this one really set the bar higher than in years past. We'll start with just the biggest surprises. And I know that's kind of tough to do because a lot happened, but uh, what caught you off guard?
Yeah. Why are you taking a guy that is so off of the list when it comes to potential in WWE? He's probably like like no other. That means there's a lot of hype for him to do good things, and you're putting him behind. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. Like, you talk about the upside. I don't know if you're going to see many more explosive highlights. Maybe Lamar from a couple years ago than, than you would see from Justin Fields, at least among quarterbacks. Even, like, Geno Smith is kind of what I'm starting to think of, where he had a rocky first, I don't know, three, four years, and then he sat on the bench forever and went around to a couple different teams. And maybe his resurgence took a little longer, but here he is starting in the NFL again after learning behind a variety of quarterbacks. Now, I think the plan with Fields is to sit behind Wilson for a year. Russ is making a veteran minimum. We'll kind of dive into that a little bit more. He's only making $1.2 million, and uh, the Broncos are paying the other $38 million. So that, that's an interesting con uh, contract in and of itself. But, yeah, I think Fields is going to have to ride this out for a year. And, I don't know, a lot of people were shocked what the Bears got for him or didn't get for him. It's a sixth-round pick. I mean, that's not a lot for somebody. You just said it, Michael. Fields is really talented. But um, apparently they were trying to do right by him. Other teams wanted to give up more for Fields, but they had a quarterback that was not like Russ. They're going to be around for a few years, and maybe Fields wouldn't get a chance. So I don't know. Big day, big day for Bears if Billy does one of those contracts. Yeah, and not a good one. Sixth rounder is like not going to do a whole lot. They gave him a stale one that was like there from two days ago, you know? is true so you've got you've got two of the better players at their position in the division i mean not just like good solid players but you've got like one of the top receivers in the nfl and one of the emerging top running backs it's true Yeah, I would say so, right? Like, if you have a talent like Caleb Williams, there aren't a whole lot of quarterbacks who get talked about for multiple years of college. Um, Trevor Lawrence was definitely one, and you can go back, but Caleb Williams has been talked about since before he transferred to UFC. You know, it's supposed to be this generational talent. And you're right, Michael, and Andy's kind of chiming in in the chat perfectly as well, saying wasn't really expecting the Bears to go out and get a Keenan Allen. That was not on my bingo card either. And for a fourth rounder, Yes, he's 32 in April. Uh, he might have the same birthday as me. I'll have to check on what day that is. But at the end of the day, you do get one of the more talented route runners in the league. So I think there's something to be said about that. There's something to be said about the fact that DJ Moore had a career year. You've got Cole Komet. And then having a dump off running back in DeAndre Swift, that helps a little bit too. So this is supposed to be what the Falcons had. Plug a quarterback in and you should be good. So we'll see. Oh, let's um, check that out. At least I just I just heard the screen and uh, I might say one thing I didn't intend to say. So like I said, sorry. 
gotcha. Mm, nope, it was on my end. We're good. You were on. You're good now. Yeah, you should be good now. So we can. I can listen back to it in a second. You were on monitor, meaning I can hear you, but the audience can't. So you were probably coming through my mic, but not your own. So we'll be good now. Sorry about that. <laughs> I know I got a text from one of my buddies who is watching, and they said, "I we can't hear you." <laughs> oh, here. Yep, you're through now. Well, shout out to whoever was watching, because that's that's kind of clutch right there. It shows your levels for me, but it was not coming out before. So, oh, what does Andy say? Keenan Allen's birthday is the 27th. Okay, mine's the 10th, so we're a little bit off. Now you're coming through. Um, if you missed any of what Michael said, and you probably did, I'll try and summarize it. Like, Michael's in a band professionally, or as you put it, like full-time, right? And uh, link is in the description for that. It's the Astronomers, if you're a day one. Had him as an outro music and intro music forever when we were all sports now. Merch link is in the description. Discord link is in the description. We're talking about free agency. We're talking about Justin Fields. And we'll be talking about who's left. And now they can hear you, Michael. So we're good now. <laughs> Woo. There we go. I think um, just to continue on with what we were saying, though, because I know a lot of your channel goes based on like a lot of fantasy football um and a lot of just like help for people i think keenan allen is going to be a huge pickup this year because he just moved in to now the big spot there in chicago now they do have correct me if i'm wrong they still do have dj Moore, right yeah so allen will be the two but um uh, the offense is stacked now like absolutely is as great as it's looked when i've been a bears fan so so I think that's that's a, a nice wide receiver. Like, if you can get Keenan Allen as a wide receiver two or, like, a always wide receiver three, that's a unbelievable um, move right there. Yeah, everyone shout out Corey Streblo for uh, texting me that. Yeah, that was um, huge. He let me know. So, um, um, but, yeah, I think that's huge there. And... Um, I know before a football guy said that Keenan Allen was like the most shock. I would say that's up there too as one of my most shocked moves in free agency just because of what really went down in LA. And you got to think Har um, Arbog, right? That's, yep. that's the new coach in LA? Yeah. You got to think he's cleaning house. He is. So, because um, who else so, is, um... yeah. Is it Mike Williams gone? Gerald Everett gone. Keenan Allen gone. Austin Eckler. Yeah. Gone. So youth yeah. movement. Big youth movement around Herbert. Uh you didn't think he had help before. He doesn't have any now. So they'll probably draft. Um they they've got a, a top five pick, so they'll probably go out and draft their wide receiver. I don't think they'll trade up or anything. Corey's saying go pack, go. Michael's a Lions fan, I'm a Bears fan, and now we've got a Packers fan in the chat, so We've got uh we've got everybody but a Vikings fan here. We need we need someone to even it out. <laughs> so yeah, Corey's a big Packer fan. I don't know if that makes you want to talk about, you know, the moves that Green Bay did. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, which I think I I don't and and you know obviously we're just kind of going off around here, but Josh Jacobs they got younger in their running back, and I personally think that was a huge move for Green Bay because. You got rid of an injury-prone running back. I think could have reached it like to this level and always stuck around here. Really solid injuries didn't allow him to get here. So I think the Packers and getting Josh Jacobs huge because they they're basically starting fresh with a great running back. And, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, big for them as Corey's letting them know about the Bears. <laughs> what could that mean? I think he just likes the Bears a lot. I'll, I'll try and figure out what those asterisks mean. Yeah, you make a good point, right? I think, um, like, I'm at a radio station here in central Wisconsin, Green Bay's two hours. Like, the fan base was pissed. They, they didn't want to see Aaron Jones go. But you bring up a great point, Michael. He's 30 years old. There aren't many 30-year-old running backs like Frank Gore held on forever. There aren't a whole lot of Frank Gores out there who are as durable as him, 
and are able to be as productive as him for as long as he was. And I went to the Bears-Packers game to open up the year, and I was sad because the Bears got blown out. But a lot of Packers fans kind of watched his demise health-wise. He pulled a hammy and was really never the same guy until late December, last couple of weeks of the season going into the playoffs. And yeah, you get way younger. Josh Jacobs is 26 years old. I will say running backs are pretty replaceable, as we just saw there, and you have a lot of two-headed backfields. They're paying him a lot of money. I mean, $12.5 million a year-ish. Um, there are opt-outs, so after year one, the Packers can say, thanks, Josh, we're done. Same after year two, year three. But it's still $12 million a year for a position that, I mean, those guys take the most hits of anyone. They're going right up the middle, and if they're going on the edge, a, a linebacker is probably going to clock them. So I thought the price they paid was interesting because Jones wanted less than that. But Jones is older, and, and health is wealth, like you said. Jacobs has been pretty durable his whole career. So, yeah, it's a big upgrade. And then... How about Jones going over to the Vikings a day later? I feel like that happens a lot with Packer players, right? Greg Jennings, Zadarius Smith, Brett Favre. Oh, I can't come back here. I'll just go to my uh, foes a little bit west, and, and we'll see what happens there. I just, um, I, so my, my dad is a big Vikings fan, and I kind of talked, I, I, he hasn't really said a thing, because I don't think he thinks it's, that great of a move for the Vikings. And I think as a Vikings fan, I don't think you're necessarily like jumping up and down the walls for Aaron Jones because yeah, you're getting a veteran back. You're getting some, 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 uh, leadership maybe in a new fresh locker room now with, with cousins on the move. We'll talk about that later. Um, but I asked my dad about this and he said something and, and I know if Corey's still watching, we'll get a laugh from him. Um, but my dad was saying, man, just think if they never got rid of Dalvin cook and I'm thinking, yeah, maybe things would have gone a little bit differently in this situation. And you wouldn't have had to go to Aaron Jones now. Um, and so I just think, you know, I personally don't think Aaron Jones is helping Minnesota's cause. I think he's better than their current situation in Matson. I don't think Matson's the answer either. No. Um, so um I think he's definitely a better option than that. I just it's interesting right now in Minnesota and you don't know where they're going as far as quarterbacks. They got and they, again you're gonna have to correct me a lot tonight, but Sam Darnold went to Minnesota, yeah, right? He did. Good job. There you go. So that's not going to – I don't think that's even – man, I don't even think that's like a healthy backup option to whoever they draft. Like, I don't, I, I don't want to think – I don't think Minnesota fans want to rely on Sam Darnold to pick up the slack for a J.J. McCarthy or a Michael Penix if they don't do what people are saying they're going to do. And I, I think there's a lot of trouble in the water in Minnesota this upcoming season. And I think, I'm going to predict it right now, I think Minnesota is fourth and last in that division next year. I agree. And the thing that sucks for them is, I would argue, they have the most talented player in that division. One of the most talented players in the entire league, that's Justin Jefferson. And I'm a little worried, Michael, because Sam Darnold's making about $10 million dollars is that starting quarterback money? Are, are they going to draft somebody? Because if they don't draft somebody with this quarterback class, with this much talent, with the best receiver in the game coming up on a contract year, he doesn't have to stay. You know, this isn't the NFL of 20 years ago where everyone's going to stay and stick it out for 15 years because it's the right thing to do. Guys want two things. They want money and they want to win. I think the second part is more applying to Justin Jefferson and you're not going to win with Sam Darnold back there. We, I'd love to see someone refute that, right? That's not the answer. So I think there's a lot of pressure on Minnesota to go and get their guy. Is it Penix? Is it McCarthy? Do they trade up and try and get a Daniels? I don't really know because their record wasn't bad enough to do that. They're going to have to trade up. But uh, clock is ticking. And if they just sit back and go, it's a bridge year. We're going to let Sam Darnold lead us to a 7-10 and 10 season or an 8-9 and nine season. And that's, I think, the best case scenario. 
I don't think Justin Jefferson is your uh, wide receiver one anymore. So I think there's a lot of pressure there. Corey says Aaron Jones healthy is better than Delvin Cook healthy. It's close. Aaron Jones for his career is averaging five yards a carry. That's a very short list of running backs who have done that. The issue, as he just brought up and as you brought up, Michael, he doesn't stay healthy. The Vikings, I don't think, fixed a whole lot by getting Aaron Jones. Madison just went to... Alexander Madison just went to the Raiders an hour ago, so he's gone. That was a one-year experiment. So yeah, I I agree. I think they're fourth. Now, what happens beyond that? I, I think the Bears are probably still third, and then the uh, Lions and Packers are fighting for that top spot, right? But I think the Vikings are very clearly struggling, and this kind of segues into, I would argue, one of the biggest moves, definitely financially, Kirk Cousins to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, I, I, obviously I wasn't, you know, investing my days and nights into where Kirk Cousins was going to end up, but I think Atlanta was an organization that ever since the great choke of Matt Ryan and Super Bowl, whatever it was, seven years ago Mm -hmm. we haven't seen this atlanta team be force since so now and and i get you know and and i get that this can be in a controversial topic but i do believe kirk cousins to be a top and, and, and this is going to get a lot of shade, but Kirk Cousins can be a top five quarterback yeah. in the NFL. I agree with you. And everyone, you know, the biggest criticism that Kirk gets, and he's going to consistently get this from people who watch the NFL, is, oh, well, let's look at his one playoff win. Let's And how that was even a stretch, that win. One of the most absurd endings in a NFL history. So it was that a fluke even should Kirk cousins, not even have a playoff win. That's another story, but you look at a quarterback that might be similar to Kirk cousins that a lot of people were that a lot of people gave ample amounts of shade to when he was on the Lions, was Matthew Stafford. Now, Matthew Stafford, it's that change of scenery late into his career, and then this doesn't happen every day, but goes on and wins a Super Bowl with L.A. That was so much of my conversation that year was me saying, I told you, this quarterback is elite. He needs the right people around him and so i'm not saying kirk cousins is gonna go into atlanta and win a super bowl first one year but he's 35 he kind of has to do that yeah if he really wants to make a name for himself as kirk cousins the quarterback he's got to go in he's got to win two or three playoff games this year that is one phenomenal comparison i mean people might not originally think oh Matthew Stafford is my comp to Kirk Cousins but I mean you know better than anybody as a Lions fan it wasn't very long ago that Stafford had the best receiver in football arguably and everyone's going well he's no he's got Kelvin Johnson what's wrong everything else is wrong the wide receiving room except for this year with Addison was phenomenal and then they bring in Hawk too but the running back room was horrible Uh, I believe you guys had job at best for a bit, and it was just a a rotary from there, right? I mean, once Delvin Cook was gone, the dominoes fell, and the defense was horrible. I mean, the Vikings had to put up 30 points, sometimes more, for their fan base to go, all right, we're safe. We can can put our head down knowing that this is put away, and it's chalked up as a W. That was kind of the same for the Lions. They never really had the best defense. I mean, they went from being an 0-16 team with Dan Orlovsky to rebuilding from scratch with Stafford, and it was up the mountain from there, and it was not an easy trek. Same thing with Kirk. Look what he just got plugged into. I know the Falcons weren't great last year, but 
Bijan Robinson. Drake London is a better receiver than he's looked like because of the quarterback play. It, it looks worse than it is. Kyle Pitts was supposed to be a generational talent at tight end. There's still time. He's still on his rookie contract. Like, there's a lot to like about Atlanta. And they're playing tougher defense. Isaiah Terrell is no joke at corner. So that is not even a comparison I thought about, but there's a lot of parallels there. Like, I actually really like that a lot. Yeah, and I've tried to use that many times in conversation. Um, I'm just trying to look for who else. I know the Texans just got a res- Yeah, they got Darnell Mooney from, from the Bears. The Yeah, the Falcons got him. Yep. The Falcons. Yeah. The Falcons got Darnell Mooney, and they also got another young guy in Rondale Moore. Yeah. So look at this wide receiving core right now, matched with a veteran quarterback like Kirk Cousins. And I'm still going to tell my kids one day if they ask me, hey, was Kirk Cousins a good quarterback? I'm going to be like, yeah, he was great. I'm going to be like, he didn't really win anything, but he was a really good quarterback. And you look at this 2022 Vikings team that had every weapon you needed to be a championship team. They had the quarterback. They had the running back. Thumbs up. They had the wide receiver and they had the new coach. They had a great team. They had a 13 and four great team that fell short. They pulled the Milwaukee Bucks. They had the best record lost in the first round to a, to a team, whether or not they should have lost or not. It's, you can't discredit what Kirk Cousins can bring is what I'm trying to say. I, I don't think you can go in and say that Kirk Cousins you can you can throw your opinion that he might not be a good quarterback because of his accolade lack of, but you can't go in and say that Kirk Cousins can't get wins. And I'm th- I'm I'm wondering if this change of scenery is going to be just what the doctor ordered. So yeah, literally I- because he's coming off of his injury here. So true, true. I like it. Right, he's coming off the knee injury. He's starting to jog again. Still plenty of time until training camp's like four months away. So Kirk O'Chain says time. If I, let's say this isn't going to happen because he just signed a ton of money. He signed on with a ton of money to go over to Atlanta and do his thing with a pretty talent-loaded roster. But if Kirk were to hang up his jersey today and his cleats and say, I'm done, I'd compare him to like a Philip Rivers. No one is going to look back at Philip Rivers and say, this guy was horrible. How did he have a starting job for so long? But the conversations you are going to have when you bring up somebody like Philip Rivers, who had some miles on him, who could throw for a ton of yards, who had the volume, who had the people around him on offense, never really had a crazy defense. The conversations you're going to have about a guy like Philip Rivers is, man, he just couldn't get over the hump. He was stuck with guys like Manning. He was stuck with guys like Brady. And he could just never, ever, ever get past those guys when he encountered them in the postseason. He was good. He was never great. Now, I would argue Kirk Cousins, the talent level that he has and the numbers that he's put up, especially now, he is great. I can't name six or seven more quarterbacks that I would take in the NFL right now than Kirk Cousins because there is so much inconsistency. But this is it, right? This is the change that Phillip Rivers didn't get. He gets to go to a new place with new weapons under a new offense that doesn't have Arthur Smith or any of the stuff they were doing last year that was not working. And he gets a fresh opportunity at the age of 35, 36 years old. I think he's got a pretty good opportunity there. The South is relatively wide open. I refuse to be scared of the Panthers for obvious reasons. The Saints are treading water. It's going to be the Buccaneers. But, I mean, would you agree, Michael, that, like, top to bottom, you stare at all four of the rosters, the Falcons are the best on that division now with Kirk? And you said the Buccaneers, too. And and you look at the gamble they're taking yep. in Baker – which I'm a Baker Mayfield fan. I I like the guy. I think he brings a lot of finesse to that team that they've been lacking since their, their little stint with Brady. Um, I think they are the threat to be the division leaders. The saints did nothing in free agency. They did just sign chase young today, but I do not trust Derek Carr I do because he has already proven multiple years now that he can't get the job done ever since o- Oakland, Las Vegas. Um, 
and you look at you know who else on that team is going to step up i'm I, for fun i'm a big Taysom hill fan i just yeah you know I, I i take pride in picking him up on fantasy and being able to say i had a guy who threw a touchdown a running touchdown and caught a pass it's a <laughs> so short that list was of fun. people who can do that but but the but the saints look Saints haven't done anything. They're not going to be a threat this year. They're going to be another average season. It's between the Bucks and Atlanta. And I would take Atlanta. I think Baker Mayfield is going to have another good year. I could even see them making the playoffs potentially. But I really think Atlanta is a threat to go 12 and 5 with Kirk. If if everyone settles in, if everyone, you know, that some young wide receivers, I'm not going to lie, but if everyone settles in, if Kirk can kind of let everyone know, you know, with that good Midwest love that he brings, like, hey, guys, it's all going to be good. Let's you know where it's good. Get home to our families and have a good dinner tonight and <laughs> have a good practice. Perfect. And amen. Phenomenal. But amen. Um, <laughs> I think I think they are going to be a fun team to watch. And you can't help but root for them. Like, there's, you know, it's it's not like they're just stacking their team with a bunch of vets or anything, you know, so... I like the new Kirk rebuild in Atlanta. I think it's going to be fun next year from a team that has been dreadful to watch the last two years. No exciting play at all. So, yeah. Yeah, I like it a lot. And I promised, promised, promised I would tie things back to fantasy. And you cannot help but talk about the value of Kyle Pitts and the value of Drake London. And the value of Bijan Robinson as well. It's not like he has a whole lot of competition. I know Tyler Algier had a good rookie year, but you'd be shocked, right? The domino effect of everybody on offense that getting somebody like Kirk Cousins has. Now, obviously, the direct correlation of Kyle Pitts is going to have some better footballs thrown his way. So is Drake London. It's fair to say those guys' values are up. If you're in Dynasty and you're in the buyer's market, my personal opinion, sit back a couple weeks and let the hype die down. Chris or Drake London and Kyle Pitts are the highest, and I mean highest price you will see them all offseason because everyone's thinking about Kirk lifting this team from mediocrity, right? Give it a few weeks, let the hype die down, maybe even let the season start if you want to. But if you think about somebody like Bijan Robinson, what do teams do when they can win more games, when they can go 12-5? and five? Fourth quarter, they're running the ball. They want to get the heck out of there. They don't want to mess around and play with their food. That's going to give somebody like Bijan Robinson more touches, and all of a sudden, we're not really complaining about Bijan only getting 10 rushes today. He got 15 on the ground and five through the air, and he scored a touchdown in the process because he touched the ball so much. So, oh, let's see. Corey's got C.J. Stroud, Mahomes. Hurts is debatable after this year, especially with how not durable he's been. Herbert's an interesting one because he hasn't had a whole lot of help. I'll let it pass. Burrow has the best supporting cast in the league when his wide receivers are actually healthy. Lamar, Fair, Goff, Allen, all guys I would take over Cousins, didn't even say love. Love's a year in, but very impressed. Yeah, I would say a handful of those. I don't buy one, two, three. I don't buy Stroud. Six, seven, eight. I don't buy Stroud yet. I, I think Stroud, give him another year, mm -hmm. see what he can do, and then I'd put him in that list, but I don't buy Stroud. And, I, and I'm a huge Jalen Hurts fan, but as his fantasy owner last year, I, I was just thinking this, Corey, when we were talking about Cousins, but, like, put Kirk Cousins in Philadelphia and watch how good Philadelphia becomes. Yeah. They don't have that. It, it changes that. It might change that brotherly shove offense that they like to run. But I think, you know, put Kirk Cousins on one of these top teams and watch what happens. Um but yeah, I, and, I mean, and I mean, like, obviously, you know, there's no debate that Kirk Cousins has fallen short. Like, you, you can obviously agree with that any day. You can let the stats talk. I'm just saying I look at football players a little bit deeper than just looks, stats, and supporting cast. I look at what Kirk Cousins has done to become a really solid quarterback. He's had multiple winning years. He's taken a team like Minnesota from basically nothing into something before he left. You can't blame Minnesota's subpar year on Kirk because he was out for all of it. 
And I think if Kirk Cousins, you know, stays healthy um, in Minnesota last year, they're giving the Lions a run for their money. And I think they're passing the Packers, too. I think they're better than 9-8 and eight with Cousins. And you saw that. They're 13-4 and four with him. Um, but, yeah, like, you can't argue. Will Kirk, you know, end up? It's a good question from Adam. Will he end his career in Atlanta? I think so. Yeah. He's a family man. He's 35. I don't see him traveling again and making his family move. I see him trying to do as much as he can here at one more team and trying to see what he can just conjure up. And it's interesting you bring up Philadelphia because I go back to the list that Corey dropped. And I agree with both of those. Like, I'm not saying day in, day out, Kirk is top five. I think he can be if he's surrounded by the right people. But with Jalen Hurts, for example, I mean, my criteria for a good quarterback is somebody who takes care of the football. Jalen Hurts did not take care of the football this year. And you would argue as well that Josh Allen did not. Now, did Josh Allen have more of a running aspect? Does Jalen Hurts get you more touchdowns on the ground via the brotherly shove? Sure, but when you just talk about taking care of the football and putting the team in the right spot to win in the fourth quarter, I'm putting Kirk up there because he doesn't turn it over. The other six or seven, I'll I'll give to you. I would put Kirk at like eighth-ish right now, eighth or ninth-ish. Yeah, Adam's saying, will Kirk end his season or his career in Atlanta? Michael, I agree with you because that's a huge contract and there's a lot, and I do mean a lot of people saying, Oh, Kirk said this three times now. I, I want to end my career here. I want to end my career here. Talking about Washington, talking about, of course, Minnesota. And now he's saying it in Atlanta. A look for a quarterback who's been in the league for as long as Kirk has. This is not a lot of teams. Like, Baker has been around, and he's not 30 yet. I mean, there are a lot of quarterbacks who have been around because they weren't able to really become a staple of their organization. They weren't able to lock down that long-term contract. And he's one of them. Uh, CJ is tough. I, I do think CJ is better than Kirk, but we need a bigger sample size in my opinion, Jordan. Like considering what he did with less weapons, no one was talking about Nico Collins a year ago, right? But now he's big. I might take CJ over him too, but I'm for sure not taking Jalen Hurts right now. It's a, it's a funky list, but, but Kirk is solidly in the top 10, I would say. Uh, do we check off everything else? Jordan was shouting out the podcast, no flags. Again, folks, if you go in the description, there is a link to no flags podcast. That's Michael. That's Jordan and Corey, who are both in the chat right now. Thank you guys for chiming in. They're talking about everything. So if you're tired of just fantasy football, you need a little variety in your life, you're filling out a bracket, go to that. (laughs) Go to that. They are covering it all. I mean, seriously. So that's fun, by the way. March Madness coming up. It is. It is. So let's see. We covered Kirk. This is this guy's in the thumbnail. So to make sure I'm not clickbaiting anybody, we'll talk about him next. Derrick Henry to the Ravens. Uh, for my fantasy notes and dynasty in general, I mean, we have someone in Lamar Jackson who's getting a little bit older for sure. He's definitely not a geezer, but he's been in the league for a fair share of years now. What do you think Derrick Henry to the Ravens does to Lamar as a runner? Uh, we were talking about this actually on our podcast uh, yesterday. Um, and I asked the question who was a bigger who who becomes a bigger impact to their team now Saquon Barkley to Philadelphia or Derrick Henry to Baltimore because these are two teams that are very highly acclaimed in the NFL that have fallen short now the last 2 years and Lamar still goes on and wins MVPs but obviously something's not clicking in Baltimore because there's not a ring to show for it so what's going wrong in Baltimore is the question. Is it the air? Is it the, I just don't know if I can take driving through Baltimore because it's a little icky. It's a great city, but it's a little icky. Let's be honest, everybody. <laughs> Come on. Something needs to happen. Something needs to go down. But now they've got a new big man in Derrick Henry joining the force and joining that elite running game. And that's huge because you go from a a iffy infused running uh running back room in Baltimore to now uh, okay here's your guy that's going to take the pressure off a healthy do they still have J.K. Dobbins or no? He is a free agent. He's a free agent. Yep. You take that pressure off a uh, Gus Edwards. He's gone too. 
He's gone. So now... <laughs> the, the stage is set for him, though. No, it's good you bring this up. The stage is set. Gus Edwards is gone. He yeah. is in Los Angeles with Mr. Harbaugh now and Justin Herbert. I mean, the stage is set, right? They cleared the way for Derrick Henry. Yes. And um, I, I think... I think it does exactly what Lamar needed to answer your question now. Yeah. I think Lamar needed a decoy. And with Derrick Henry being at the mid to end, mid slash end, I'm going to say, because he's not in the middle, he's not at the end, mid slash end of his career, I think it does exactly what Lamar Jackson needed and has been need, needing in his career, which is a running back decoy, and someone as strong as Derrick Henry is going to do a great job, I think. Which now, I think, makes it a threat to now take down Mahomes in Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, that, that could be what gets them over the hump. When you look at everything the Ravens have brought to the table, You've got one of the best, you could argue, the best defense in the league from this year. You've got one of the best quarterbacks in the league this year. You have a lack of weapons, but they've started to build that. They went out and got Zay Flowers. They've had Mark Andrews. It's getting older, so maybe Isaiah likely takes over. They've never had a consistent running back. Like, J.K. Dobbins, yards per carry, phenomenal. He can't play a full season. He's gone. That's the reason he's gone. Keaton Mitchell just scooted in. He had a couple great games. Came down with an ugly, one of the ugliest knee injuries of the year. He's going to be the backup. Uh, Gus Edwards wasn't, I mean, he was probably the most durable, but he still wasn't there all 17. So right now the depth chart is Derrick Henry, Keaton Mitchell, Justice Hill, Owen Wright. So yeah, I agree, Michael. I mean, this is a team that finally, finally, finally gets their guy, their consistent RB1. Lamar's rushing yards are going to go down, I think, because Lamar in his career... I believe we're going on six years now. Could be going into seven. He's never had that RB1 behind him. So he's had to run. Lamar is aging, and they finally have... They're not going to have him for long. He's going to be 30 this year. They finally have a decisive choice behind him, and they can run read option with Derrick Henry, which is going to be very scary. I'm excited for that. I'm also excited for Hollywood Brown to Kansas City. Mahomes, I don't know how he did it. I don't know how that Kansas City Chiefs team won a ring this year. That is one of the worst wide receiving cores in the entire league. Rasheed Rice is great. Travis Kelsey still had a phenomenal year by many, many standards. That was it. Like Kadarius Toney was supposed to be their wide receiver one. Stone hands. MVS, same thing. Justin Watson, once in a while. And now we're getting into names we just don't know. Right? So the fact they went out and got someone who can put up a thousand yard season, be all reliable when Travis Kelsey, who's 34 years old, isn't going to be there forever. I mean, that's pretty exciting to me. I don't know. Doesn't that Chiefs team just feel like they got a little more dangerous with a legit weapon out there now? Um, well, my shirt says it all right now. Um, I think Kansas City, it, it's really cool. I talk about this with my friends all the time. We are witnessing greatness right now from a player, and that's Patrick Mahomes. So Patrick Mahomes, arguably, it, it's still so early in his career, and I think that's what makes it so exciting. But he could be the greatest quarterback of all time when it's all said and done if he keeps it up the way he's been doing. Because you look at how he's doing it, and you immediately can't have an argument if you're trying to prove a different side. You, to your point, Corey, take a team with a a veteran tight end who's getting up there in age, and then you've got nobody. You have two young guys. You've got your running back, you've got Minster Speedster, and then you've got Rashi Rice. Yep. Rice had problems, I think, with his overall emotions. I think sometimes his emotions got the best to him. It led to calls that shouldn't have been made. But there's one guy who is single-handedly making these players in from from low-tier wide receivers into mid- to high-tier wide receivers, and that's Patrick Mahomes. It doesn't matter who you put in Kansas City, and we found this out that it's the truth because he's done it two years in a row now. 
you take a team that had the best wide receiver in the NFL, and Tyree Kill, arguably saying, and then you get rid of him, and then comes everybody. Here comes the Stephen A. Smith saying, what are they doing in Kansas City? <laughs> yep. And everyone is proved wrong because Patrick Mahomes doesn't need Tyreek Hill. He doesn't need anybody. And now they just went out and helped him out a bit because why not make it a little bit more fun for the Kansas City barbecues that are about to happen every single weekend in Kansas City when Mahomes goes 14 and 3 next year. Yeah. 14 and 3 sounds right with a new weapon. And it's. If we're going to make an NBA comp, because you did that with the Bucks earlier, so I think it's only fair I do one. We talk about LeBron, the first time he ever went to the finals and they did lose to the Spurs. Go back and look at that team. Uh, I can name off a couple. Anderson Verjao, Mo Williams. These are not Hall of Famers. Um, th these are not guys who you plug into a team and go, that is why we won. That was a great supporting cast. You're going to go back in 10 years and look at this Kansas City Chiefs team outside of Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, and Pacheco, who put up really nice numbers, and you're going to go, how on earth did that team get into the playoffs? How on earth did that team make a run? And how on earth did that team beat the most stacked team top to bottom in the NFL to cap it all off in the 49ers? How did they do that? I, I don't know the answer to that other than by saying Mahomes is a great. Your questions take precedent, so we're going to run down those next. Corey is saying bigger impact, Henry to the Ravens or Barkley to the Eagles. I'll say Henry to the Ravens because they've never really had that stable running back, and I do believe they need it because that team hasn't been to the Super Bowl yet. J.K. Dobbins, huge injury issues. Keaton Mitchell this year, Gus Edwards in and out. Derrick Henry, I think, in that team needs a running back one, whereas with the Eagles, I think you can plug just about anybody in and they will succeed. We saw with the Ravens, sometimes you got to lean on your quarterback a little more. You know, DeAndre Swift was there last year. He did his job, but so did Kenneth Gainwell. So did a variety of guys. Boston Scott will get his own. Like, I think you can make the argument with that Eagles offensive line, you could plug more people in there and have success than you could with the Ravens because they've relied more on Lamar. So I'm going to say Henry to the Ravens, even though he's older, was bigger. What's your take on that, Michael? Yeah, I'm going to say, I'll give a quick response. I'm going to say Henry to the Ravens just because I think everything's up in the air in Philadelphia right now. And, um, you know, you lose Jason Kelsey, that that core to the offensive line, and you have a you have a quarterback who we don't really know what's going to happen. So I'm going to say Henry to the Ravens. Yeah, I like that a lot. It's crazy how much the dynamic can change in a year. I think a year ago today, we're all looking at Jalen Hurts' run to the Super Bowl and going, holy cow, this guy could be one of the best. Still could be, but the confidence kind of got that could. down. Yeah, yeah. It didn't yeah. die, but it's... I'm a little more conservative on saying I love Jalen Hurts in Philly for the next 10 years, right? Like, I don't think mm -hmm. that's as likely anymore, but it definitely still could happen. Jordan saying, does this lower Lamar's weekly fantasy numbers bringing in Henry? I would say so because most fantasy formats, it's 10 yards for a point on the ground. It's 25 yards for a point through the air. And they're not going to need to run Lamar. And why would they? Why would you put your quarterback in more harm when you've got one of the best running backs in the game and Derrick Henry? So... I think Lamar is still great. I still think he's a top 10 fantasy-wise, but I think we see more throwing volume from Lamar. Good. Likewise. <laughs> and then we got uh, Corey saying two great questions. I agree. Those were really making us dig deep. Adam saying, when does Kelsey start to fall off? I don't think he lets himself fall off. I think if they three-peat this year or they get dang close, he calls it a career and, and lives his life with Taylor. Yeah, that's that's my take. So <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I think Travis is having a really great moment in in his life. I think people people look at sports as just sports and that is everything is wrong with that because people need to understand that these are humans just like us. These are people who have a daily life, who have relationships, who have a family and who have their personal self-care. I think he's doing a great job of that. I think he's got the smarts up here to know when enough is enough. I don't think it's going to be like a Travis Kelsey gets 400 yards receiving on two touchdowns, and then he's like, okay, I'm done. I think he's going to be fine up until the end of his career. Great support system, and uh, yeah, he'll be fine.
Yeah, I, I don't think he's going to let himself fall off. There are certain people who played maybe a couple years too much, and now we're going, what, what are you doing? Like, just hang it up, right? But I don't think Kelsey gets to that point. We're, we're nearing the end. The fact that someone had to ask him after the Super Bowl, are you coming back? That usually means we're a year or two away. So I don't think he falls off, Adam. I'm, I'm buying him again this year. Hollywood Brown's a great wide receiver one, but so was Tyree Kill, and Kelsey was still good. Bapjap is asking a very important question. I've gotten this a couple times. Never played Dynasty before. What's the difference between that and a redraft? So, I mean, redraft is typically the entire thing. Like, you are hard reset, right? You don't bring anybody over. There are people who do keepers. Let's say Michael and I are in a league. Michael keeps Jamar Chase. I keep Justin Jefferson. There's one or two keepers. And then there's Dynasty. Dynasty, you're typically keeping your core, majority of your players. And this goes from, uh, from league to league and you're drafting rookies. So you are quite literally the general manager of a team. You're holding on to the majority of your players. You might let somebody fly to free agency, but, 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 but you are definitely going after rookies. So you're paying attention to Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison Jr., Jaden Daniels, insert, you know, Romeo Dunze, insert talented rookie here. So redraft is exactly what you just said. You redraft the whole thing. Keeper, you hold on to your golden ticket, one or two. And Dynasty is dialed back a little more. You're drafting rookies, keeping the rest. So you're trying to build a Dynasty, just like a, a Kansas City Chiefs right now, right? Hey, Animal is saying, let's see. Going to be that guy. Refs were very questionable in the playoffs this year. I feel like I hear that every year. Like, I, I understand what you're saying. I think the refs were very questionable when the Saints and Rams collided on a pass interference that couldn't be reviewed. And it definitely was one, by the way. I don't mean to air quote that. But yeah, there, there were some that went each way. I can think of a lot of teams that got a lot of breaks, you know? Yeah, I think uh, it's just a it, it's just something that when you're passionate about a team, you can have a day to be upset about it, maybe a two, couple of days, maybe the weekend. But then you have to understand that the refs are human. And if we want this to keep up, we need to be okay with it because if it keeps being complained about no refs are in the future a lot quicker than we think robo refs. so <laughs> so we shouldn't wish for something that we don't want yeah. because everyone 20 years from now is going to be saying man i miss umpires in baseball why don't we have those anymore mm -hmm. i think um i, I just I love Not to that. get dramatic, but... <laughs> no, but I think you're right. Like, when an umpire goes up in baseball and just rings someone up and the crowd roars because they're waiting on his reaction, I don't think as many people would go nuts if they just saw a red K appear on a screen and they're all like... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's, there's a human element there. So I completely agree. It's like when you watch the DVD thing hit the corner. Like, that's what we're going to see. I don't think we're going to do that, right? Uh, Heather says, right. any hope for the Bears' new lineup? Best player for a fantasy team from the new Bears. Um, so from the new players that are there, I'm more of a DeAndre Swift fan than I would be a Keenan Allen fan. Just because, like Michael has brought up before, DJ Moore's the guy. DJ Moore's in his prime. Keenan Allen's going to be good, but he's the second option. It's DeAndre Swift's backfield. Um, out of that whole lineup, I would say DJ Moore is your one. Out of the new people, I would go Swift. Caleb Williams comes in, we might have a different conversation, but uh, rookies are risky for sure. Cole Komet's a solid tight end too. So lots of good matchups, but um, Swift is the best new addition on the offense fantasy-wise because he's a pass catcher, which uh, those are pretty valuable when you're dealing with running backs. DJ Moore is the guy. He's the A1 there. Hey, Animal is saying Saquon's a huge upgrade. I'm an Eagles fan. I definitely agree. Health is wealth. We, we do need him to be healthy, to be the dynamic running back that he is. Corey says refs were terrible this year, period. I would agree in some instances. I, I'm not going to say they weren't, but there's that human element, right? Adam saying, Heather, obviously there's no hope for the bear. All righty. Thank you. You know, I never have hope, Adam, but uh, it's good to know that you're in here to remind me. Uh, Alex says, what's up? What's up, Alex? Babjab saying, I know I'm late to some of these questions. You're all good. But Barkley to Philly. What happens with Swift's usage? Swift is gone, my guy. Swift is a Chicago Bear. So I know lots of movement around. Me and Michael just talked about Gus Edwards and how he flew somewhere. But yeah, hard to keep track of. DeAndre Swift is gone. So that is Saquon Barkley's backfield. I believe Kenneth Gainwell is the RB2. I can go fact check myself with that. But uh, yeah, gone is Mr. Swift. 
And then Bap Jap also saying Hertz typically punches it in in the red zone, but what now? Sell high? I don't think that really changes unless we outlaw the tush push. I don't know how you feel about it, Michael, but I don't think Saquon coming in just destroys Jalen Hurts as a runner. You know what I mean? No, I I still, you know, I was as a fantasy owner of Jalen Hurts last year and having a really solid, you know, losing in the semifinals in my fantasy bracket. I still, he's still a very solid option to have like on your team whether that's in in NFL or that's in fantasy, he's still a really calm, cool, and collected quarterback where if you watch him, this guy doesn't show a single lick of emotion on the bench or when he's playing. And there's something to that psychologically, I think, that's deeper than the statistics of Jalen Hurts that I think will carry him to a decent season still with Philadelphia. And I think it's easy for us to look and be like, man, they fell off last year. But also, you look at LeBron and the Lakers. They fell off, and then they won in 2020 right away. Um, and, and it's just, it, you just don't know. So I think Hurts is fine. I think he's still going to push it in the red zone himself. Philadelphia's not going to just all of a sudden stop doing that. Um, but now they have another option. They have another big man who can do that too in Saquon Barkley. So, um, yeah, it's going to be an interesting season in that um, in that Philadelphia locker room. And maybe it's a voice in my head or the fact I feel like someone's about to call me out. I feel like a little bit of a hypocrite, but I'm going to kind of back it up. So we're saying, and I'm saying, like, Saquon is not going to impact Hurts as a rusher, but Henry will impact Lamar as a rusher. Different styles, right? Hurts squats 600 pounds. His rushing is up the middle, over the pile, behind the best O-line in the league. Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson, that's a dynamic of someone in Lamar who's going to get out in the open field, juke the heck out of your best linebacker, and run freely until someone hits him or he can slide. So two different styles, but I agree, Michael. Like when you have someone stone cold emotion like Jalen Hurts, I mean, we talked a little bit about how that team did kind of fall off. They are still so talented. But uh, Bap Jap, I don't think that Hurts, you know, punching it in the end zone, unless they outlaw the tush push, really changes. Saquon's a big guy, but there's a certain advantage about just having a guy under there and all he has to do is lunge because there's strong individuals behind him and he's strong too. Love Lamar, but he's not squatting six, 700, right? So yeah, that's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, Heather's saying Swift and more. Copy that. Alex says my team sucks. So just listening. Alex, I got to know who your team is because you're talking to a Bears fan. So it can't be that much worse. <laughs> and then I got a couple of Bears shout outs. And then Heather's saying still cracks me up to the Bears PR team stopped wait a minute stop that they were trading fields when the whole city of chicago was drunk for set yeah that's kind of funny right whole city of chicago's out there you know enjoying their saint patrick's day weekend nothing could go wrong and we feel like free agency is kind of in the rear view mirror and fields is going to be safe and then right after your pina colada he's gone <laughs> so he's gone yeah the windy city got a little windier yeah, it did. It did. We've got, <laughs> hey, Animal says LaFraud. Okay, somebody doesn't like LeBron. Hurt second half, straight up sucked. He was hurt, no pun intended. He was battling some injuries. And then Adam saying, is Trey Lance ever going to be a starter? Interesting to see if he or Justin Fields have a better career. I mean, Trey Lance got kicked around and now he's behind Dak. Fields is behind someone who is on a veteran minimum contract. Like Dak... He's got a bigger contract. He's going to be around in Dallas for a longer time. And Trey Lance is kind of just there to step in if he needs to. I think Fields got shipped to Pittsburgh because they do believe he's going to have a chance to start next year. So no bias involved. I do think Fields has a better chance just because we've seen more from him already. The fact that Trey Lance hasn't seen the football field much tells me he doesn't look too good in practice. So that's kind of my take on that. There's a reason. There is a reason you go into your local Shields and you go into the clearance jersey racks and you see nothing but Trey Lance number five for the 49ers on those for 20 bucks Ooh. and maybe a Domino's gift card because they just need to get rid of them. I think about that sometimes, right? Like, do I go and get a Gardner Minshew jersey from when he was on the Jags for 15 bucks? Like, that's a good deal. Like, you kind of want someone who turns out it, well. Trey Lance is not looking too good right now. Hey, that's what I did. I went and got a Baker Mayfield Browns jersey for 10 bucks, 
before the season started, and then he went on to be a dynamic team in the playoffs this year for, for Tampa Bay. Yeah. Um, but I just noticed a question came in, Corey. I was actually going to bring this up because when when do the Cowboys, when do the beloved Dallas Cowboys of Texas give up on who is Dak Prescott? Because I'm honestly surprised it hasn't been already. It's fair until we also look at like the Kirk Cousins thing, right? He was in Minnesota for how long? Yep. yep. And it's kind of like, okay, this yep. guy's got a lot of weapons. I would argue Dak has way more help. Dak's got Micah Parsons. He's got Trayvon Diggs. Uh, Darius Bland had a phenomenal year. I would argue Dak has more help, but it's going to take a lot. Unless you're the 49ers, they've got some chops. It is going to take a lot to make a move at quarterback when you're already winning, what, like 12, 11 games? Like, is Dak doing phenomenal? I would argue not. But I would also argue Dak had a good year this year. And for whatever reason, that team just cannot perform in the postseason. And he plays for America's team. So there's that magnifying glass on him, right? Uh, You know, there's certain teams that have that magnifying glass on them. And I would say the Cowboys are one. I'd be curious if Dak's there forever. I'm not saying that, but I I don't think he's safe. Adam's saying Dak will be in Denver before 2030. See, I could see that. We're six years away and maybe he gets shipped off. And Denver, when was Denver's last consistent quarterback? Peyton Manning? That was a while ago. So... Yeah, but, uh, ooh, Hey Animal is saying Fields has all the tools, right? I'm going to leave myself out of this one and just kick it to you first, Michael. What do you think about Mr. Fields? Does he have what it takes? Problem with Justin Fields is I, I understand that people can think of him as a quarterback that has no ceiling because he kind of has that build. He's got that Jalen hurts physique in a sense where he can run the ball and throw the ball. He can do what he's supposed to do in 2024 as a quarterback. He hasn't. And I'm not saying that, you know, he's getting any help in Chicago, but I think if you're a good quarterback in the NFL, you don't need more than a DJ Moore and a Darnell Mooney and a a decent wide receiving core. Yeah, Cole Komet is good too. To, you know, to to do what you need to do, and and you look at C.J. Stroud. We were talking about him earlier. He didn't necessarily come into Houston with the the biggest stars in Hollywood on the team at wide receiver. But he then made a Nico Collins, like you said, into something. He made some of these guys into a bigger role. So I don't know about Justin Fields. That's why I think taking it back to the beginning of the episode where I said I think this is going to be good for him in Pittsburgh where he doesn't have to be forced into something that he's not ready for. And that's okay. Like you said with Geno Smith, it's okay. You don't necessarily have to start out in the NFL as a great quarterback to become a good quarterback. Sometimes you need to take that step back. And, you you know, it's the old saying, one step forward and three steps back. I think in this case, that's what Justin Fields is doing. And I think he's going to benefit from it in a guy like Russell Wilson, who has a very similar play style, like we said to him. So I don't know if he has all the tools yet. He very much could be. Give two years for Justin Fields, and it'll be a different story. So lots of facts being spoken right now. Everything you just said about the fact that he might need to develop behind someone who, if we're looking for play style comps, Russell Wilson is up there. He didn't run for 1,000 yards, but he was definitely more of a run-first guy at certain points. And I think Hey Animal hit it on the nose. Speed, arm strength, check, check. Needs better vision. There are freeze frames out there, and I know it's not always what it looks like, but open is open. There are freeze frames out there of Cole Komet, of DJ Moore, of at one point Chase Claypool, of Darnell Mooney, standing wide open in the middle of the field or wide open on a check down, and Justin does not see them. And then we talk about C.J. Stroud, and that's why I love that you brought that up too. That case study takes away every argument, and I'm a Bears fan, every argument of Justin Fields' defenders of, 
We just got to see if he's good. Justin Fields was year three. CJ Stroud was year one. Justin Fields, as you brought up, Michael, had DJ Moore, had Cole Komet, had a pretty good O-line. As much as people want to say he didn't, he held the ball longer than anybody not named Patrick Mahomes. The O-line was fine. Justin Fields just didn't process things fast enough. And maybe some guys didn't get open, but then he needs to get out. He's the most athletic quarterback in the NFL. It's the vision. I mean, he is one of the most athletic individuals to play in this game, but it's the vision. It's the fact that when it comes down to it in the fourth quarter, he is making the wrong decision time and time and time again. Is it always going to be that way? I don't think so. I don't, I hope not. But what did CJ Stroud accomplish in his first year with less weapons from the same school? So I don't want to hear about the Ohio State curse anymore. CJ Stroud did phenomenal. Like, yes, it's a one-off. We haven't seen many rookie years like that. But C.J. Stroud did more with less. Less talent, less experience. I mean, the Texans were supposed to be garbage this year, dude. Like, garbage. And they won a playoff game. Yeah. yeah. It's, I, I don't have anything else to say to that. Yeah, It's crazy, right? Like, C.J. Stroud did everything that Justin Fields was supposed to do. A different style, right? He didn't run a whole lot in, in one year. He got his playoff win with a team that really wasn't that good on paper. So, yeah, hey, Animal, I think you hit it on the nose. Adam saying he's the Kmart version of Lamar. <laughs> that's a little harsh, but I could see it, right? Like, same play style. That's that's something. That's a way to put it. I don't think that's fair. I don't think so I don't either, think that's fair. To each their own. But I think that's a Vikings fan coming at a Bears fan. <laughs> I take him, Adam. I, I, I take him. I understand. We will uh, we'll see how Sam Darnold does this year. I'm just kidding. But um, we'll look over at Bap Jeff says, I had Hurts and Fields as a backup. Wonder if his stock goes up now that he's with Pitt. Uh, still not sold on him. So if you're a Justin Fields owner in Dynasty, and we will tie this back to that from time to time here, um, you're kind of in a weird spot because we're told that he's going to sit behind Russ. I've seen a couple of reports that Russ is going to sign a long-term deal, which is I don't really know what happens then. And then there's the part that Justin Fields is on his fourth and final year of a rookie contract. So he doesn't really have to be in Pittsburgh after this year if the experiment doesn't go well. If he doesn't learn what he wanted to learn. If he gets thrown in the fire for Russ and falls on his face. But if he does really good, maybe he gets re-signed. I, if you're booked in a dynasty league and you know you're going to be in it three or four years from now, bench him. There's talent there. Definitely don't sell him. I think Fields' stock today is as low as it's ever been. If you want to buy him, I think buy low. It's a buyer's market. So be it. But we'll see. Uh, left a ton of throws on the field. I do agree with that. Babjab saying Dallas has to move on from Dak. Unfortunately, the Jones family runs the show. He's Jerry's baby. There's that, too. There's a lot of people who criticize Dallas's front office. I'll be honest. I don't know a ton about the decisions he makes. I just know they can't win playoff games. And then, uh, eh, hey, Animal says, I know my stuff. I subscribe to Armchair. Oh, I appreciate that, man. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> could could listen to content like this all day. Great stuff. Positive vibes. Michael, these are rave reviews. This cannot be your last time on here. If, if you want to come back, the chair is there for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting in the armchair right now. <laughs> perfect. I had to. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Adam asking if Stroud's a future MVP. I do think so, considering what he did. Um, It might it might take a while, right? Like, we're still waiting on guys it's... like Jalen Hurts to get theirs, but we'll, we'll see, right? It's, it's very early. And... Yeah, it's too early or too early to tell. Um, that's kind of like one of the big questions, Corey, that we keep talking about with uh, my friends is is what quarterback is going to do the best this year in the draft, and it's just like one of those questions where you just don't know because, and I know this is a little, um, oh gosh, this might be a little hurting for you, Corey, but let's look at last year's draft. And what happened? Yeah, with the one and two picks. Yeah, you don't know. You don't know, and 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 you could say that it's a similar situation this year, because look at Bryce Young. Mm -hmm. uh, what he's like five eleven. Yeah, he's a small quarterback coming into a a confused organization. That and and look at what Carolina did. They went and got a great wide receiver last year because because Adam Thielen <laughs> comes up again. Adam Thielen's thinking, Bryce Young, I want to go there. Man, 
that was not the right choice. And and then you look at Houston, CJ Stroud with the second pick. That ended up being the right thing. And he's a tall quarterback like a Jaden Daniels, who is a similar play style to CJ Stroud. So is it going to be a repeat of 2023 draft? I don't know. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I know Caleb Williams is a little bit different than Bryce Young, and Bryce Young still has a lot to prove. But, man, it it is really uh, scary, I think, because you don't know. You don't know what's going to happen with the quarterbacks in the draft. For all we know, Bo Nix could be the next MVP in the NFL, and we don't even know it because he might not even go in round one. So, yeah. And he might not even have to go in round one, right? Like Tom Brady was a late pick. There's certain diamonds in the rough that uh, we don't really hear about. Pat Mahomes? Pat Mahomes was not first overall, and he sure as heck wasn't second. He was halfway down the line in in round one. And I would argue, and we kind of look at Mahomes now, he was in a bad situation this year, and they still want it. But environment matters, right? Like Bryce Young got nothing this year. He got old Adam Thielen, who had a really good year, actually, and in nothing else. Christian McCaffrey was gone. DJ Moore was gone before Bryce Young was even a thought because he was in that trade. Uh, Bears fleece the Panthers very badly. That's the one thing I'll be proud of for them. I, the front office is making moves. <laughs> but, um, no, you bring up a good point. We're in this similar situation again where, you know, it was Trevor Lawrence, Mac Jones, Justin Fields, Trey Lance, Zach Wilson in the field before Davis Mills. Uh, here we are again. Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May, Bo Nix, um, Penix. We have J.J. McCarthy. Like, there are a lot of names up there who people are arguing should be number one, and that's usually a sign that we're going to have a wide spread of, uh, of results. We're going to have the guy that landed, and we're going to have the guy that is in Fields' spot or is in Zach Wilson's spot or Mac Jones. That draft ended up being horrible, by the way. 2021 was a bad quarterback draft. <laughs> Supposed to be stacked, but it, it could happen. Like, anything under the sun could happen. Um, I do want to scoot down to – this is kind of off the quarterback train, but it does have to do with Dynasty – Austin Eckler, remember how he was like the best running back in the league when CMC was down? Um, He's on the commanders now. That's, that wasn't on my bingo card. (laughs) Yeah, and Blake, one of the um, co-hosts of No Flags with me, is is a commanders fan. And I would say Washington had one of the best free agencies. And I need to, um, I need to go and pick up you know what they all got i don't know if you can um say a few off the top but i know that they they got bobby wagner a veteran linebacker Mm -hmm. but also they've got this second pick in the draft and they're gonna take Jaden daniels who i think is going to be the pick this year obviously like i said we don't know but man washington did well in getting that guy because now you you have a for sure you have a for sure guy in Washington. We didn't really know with um Brian Robinson last year what was going on with him. He was iffy. He had some good games. There was some, you know, sparks that flew for him. But Austin Eckler, he's kind of a guy that you know what you're gonna get. And I think they really ended up in the in the in the gold with that, with that trade. And I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to sit here and look at who else they got. Cause I know that they got a few good pulls this year. Yes. Yeah, so they got um, Wagner. Um, looking around, looking around, nothing looks too new. I know they made a couple got, moves. They got Dante Fowler Jr. Zach Ertz. Uh, they got, they got a backup too. Here's one of my, here's one of my best, Things that I think Washington did, and no one else is going to say this but me. But they picked up Marcus Mariota. Yeah. And I think he is one of the greatest guys in the NFL. And is a quarterback that I don't, that I wouldn't mind coming off the bench for my team Mm -hmm. and also helping a young guy like a Jaden Daniels progress in the NFL and learn how to balance a checkbook. 
And that's a guy that can do that for Jaden Daniels. And I think that's huge for a team like Washington, who was a demise team last year. It didn't really know what they were getting with um, Sam Howell. He had a few good games in the middle there where people were starting to feel good about him. But now it's time to move on from that and start fresh. And they did a good job with that. And I think Austin Eckler is a great, a great running back to put behind Daniels. Sam Howell's going to be a fun story because he threw for a lot of yards, made a lot of mistakes, but he was just a rookie. I, I think he could be a starter in a year or two. Again, Marcus Mariota, I love that you brought this up because I think the commanders showed their hand. They are definitely getting Jaden Daniels. If you look at Marcus Mariota and you look at the 2024 quarterback class and you tell me who is this, or you ask me who is the spitting image of Marcus Mariota in 2024, it is Jaden Daniels. And there's really no one else who's that close. You could argue Penix, but he didn't run as much as people would think. He threw for a ton of volume. Definitely athletic. You get someone who has not only been in the NFL for a while, he has dealt with the exact same situation that Jaden Daniels is going to deal with. He was the number two overall pick in the draft. Marcus Mariota was number two about a decade ago now. I think it was 2015. He knows teed for tot exactly what Jaden Daniels is about to be going through. That's a phenomenal point. He's going to guide him. This is someone who sat behind Jalen Hurts last year, got his number called. He's got some miles on him. He's seen some things. Is he going to be a starter? I don't think so. I don't know if he'll ever be a starter again. I don't want to say that because the Geno story. But yeah, I'd be shocked if he's not a really good guidance figure and a good backup and a good supporting element on this team. And we go back to Austin Eckler. You know, there's the argument that you're not going to run the ball a whole lot because you are a losing football team. Well, I'd argue Austin Eckler is the exception because he is an elite pass catcher. I want to be careful with people being optimistic on him. Um, this is not the, he's going to be good. This is not the Austin Eckler of two years ago. Um, Brian Robinson Jr. showed some things this last year. Chris Rodriguez is a decent RB3. Like, we're not going to get 1,800 total yards, Austin Eckler. We're not going to get 1,500 total yards, Austin Eckler. We are going to get an effective running back who is probably the main piece of this offense. Because Jaden Daniels, if he learns anything in his first year, it's going to be to check it down. It's going to be when there is nothing down the field, just toss it to one of the best pass catching running backs in the league. So, like, be conservative if you're drafting this year, but, um, or trading. But I think I agree with a lot of that. Austin Eckler is a good safety blanket, and Marcus Mariota is the spitting image of, of Jaden Daniels just from nine years ago. I do want to, and again, this is flexible. If anything comes up in the chat, we can cover it too. Um, Adam brought one up enough trashing the bears. Can we hear about Aaron Rodgers? Would you be happy if he was our vice president? That is, <laughs> that is, that is something. I don't know if he's going to actually do it, but I think it'd be really funny if he ran and then like it didn't happen. And then he just came back and played football in November. I think that'd be pretty hilarious. But like, is this just to be absolutely clear? This is a strictly hypothetical question. I didn't miss something drastic in the news. Um, he has thought about running. He is like thinking about being a running mate. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm not surprised. It's a, uh, in my opinion, it's not... a look at me. Like, you know, I got to be in the news again. I don't think he'll actually do it, but he did come out and say like, I'm thinking about going into office this year, even though he's under contract with the jets and is owed a lot of money. <laughs> he might just do it. You know, the Aaron Rodgers situation, there's a few people who didn't make it past 2020 up here. <laughs> and um, I'm not saying I dislike the guy because it's not like everything he says is wrong, mm -hmm. but it's like, dude, you're supposed to be the face of the NFL. You threw it away. You didn't care. Oh, yeah. You you didn't care. You have a moral obligation to be a role model for young kids that want to play football. And Aaron Rodgers treated football like it was just some play in the park game that meant nothing. Mm -hmm. And it honestly ticks me off. Because, yeah, you can't help the injuries, but you can help the acting. 
And I think there's there's room for expressing your opinions on topics that you feel matter, but there's also room to do your job. And I think he forgot to do that. Yeah, no, very well said, Adam saying, I think he spent too much time in his darkness retreat. It's just like things that aren't related to football. I've never heard more about a player than I have with Aaron Rodgers. Antonio Brown's up there too. Antonio Brown and football are two very different entities right now. Uh, yeah, he's running with RFK. He's an independent. Hey, Animal was going back to the Austin Eckler thing, saying RBs dry up quickly. Could agree with that. And then Heather says the darkness is a scary place. I can't blame him. So yeah, it's... He's had a weird four years. He definitely has. And then he tears the Achilles. People thought he was going to come back in like two and a half months. He was going to have this crazy regenerative surgery that uh, just accelerated the repair of an Achilles for a 39-year-old human. Uh, a lot of people didn't believe it. He's walking around after a little, and that was about all we saw in the Jets missed the playoffs. But do want to cover who is, so we kind of talked about Free agents who have been snatched up, guys who have hit the trade market and have been tossed to another franchise. Who is left? So I have a little list here, and this will be a quicker portion of this, and we'd probably put a bow on this one. Stream's doing phenomenal. If you've tuned in already and have liked, thank you very much. Again, Michael's got two very important links in the description that we threw in there. Go listen to The Astronomers. They're in the midst of releasing a new album, and also go and look at the No Flag, or I guess listen to the No Flags podcast. They're they're operating with a little more variety than I am. It's more than just fantasy football. So they're covering the bracket and a ton of other cool stuff too. And a few of them have been in the chat today. So thank you guys for that as well. But I do want to cover as our kind of our final topic before any other questions fly in. Who is left? So available free agents fantasy wise. And if you have any questions about fantasy, toss those too. We have Mike Williams, a lot of wide receivers. Mike Williams, Tyler Boyd. J.K. Dobbins, Williams and Dobbins coming off a season-ending injury again. Michael Thomas and Odell Beckham Jr. So, what is that? Four wide receivers and an injury-prone running back. Which guy from who I just named do you think has the most left in the tank and who would be the greatest asset for a team that picks him up? I, and no one's going to agree with me here, but I think somebody who made an impact in Baltimore last year was Odell Beckham Jr. We're talking about, you look at the rest of those guys on that list and you think solid, solid careers. But you look at Odell Beckham Jr. and you're thinking one of the best, flashiest, energetic hands in history. And I think that's the gamble that's worth taking, in my opinion, because you're bringing a guy that can bring some finesse into the locker room. You're bringing a guy who has the track record. You're bringing a guy who's still quick on his feet, moving up there in age. And I think it's fine to have a guy that can kind of tick the defenders off on the other side. And that's Odell Beckham Jr. I, I I know that's not a popular opinion, oh, yeah. but I think that he's a fun option and he's a low risk because you're not probably going to have to cough up an arm and a leg anymore for exactly. an Odell Beckham Jr. like you did six years ago. So he's, he's not a guy that you're going to have to get a ton of money off the table for, and he's still a guy that has the track record and the stats to back up any sort of competition that he has left in him. I'm heading in a different direction, but I do like that take because I'm looking at Odell down the line from the last five years. So 2019, 1,000 yards for Cleveland, and then the injury train, right? He goes 319 receiving yards, 232, 305 in 2021, misses the entirety of 2022 because of that non-contact knee injury. And he comes back in 14 games, has 565 yards and three touchdowns, I think discount-wise, you get somebody who it's kind of hard for him to underperform. You're probably not, if I had to put a number to Odell, you're probably not paying more than 3 or $4 million for a one-year contract. Now, he is 31. He, in his last five years, has only played more than 10 games once, so there is that risk. But how much of a risk are you taking if you only spend a couple million? So I do like that, and Baltimore needed him. I mean, Baltimore needed him bad. I, it was Zay Flowers and the field. Mark Andrews went down, and for a while, Odell was the two. Like, he was that second option. So I actually like that a lot. 
and and just to like back that i'm looking at my team you know detroit who in their free agency got all the pieces that they needed they got all their defenders they got their cornerbacks they got their safeties and they got their edge rushers and so now you look at detroit what do they need and it's a wide receiver so obviously you might see them take that in the draft early on and at some point but like I'm thinking as a Detroit fan, I wouldn't mind Odell Beckham Jr. behind Amon Ra and Jamison Williams as like a three or a four. Just someone to come in and take off the load that can still catch the ball better than a lot of people in the NFL. Like, I know he's old. I know he's injury prone. But when he's on, he can... It's like... Think about it in a standpoint in like... um, Think about like the NBA. Okay, you think of the regular season play on like Steph Curry. They go maybe average 50-50, but then who do you want in the playoffs for your team? You want a guy who's a veteran, who knows how to do it. Steph Curry comes into the playoffs, and I think he can win it every single year. I, even if they're a 10 seed, it's one of those things. So you put Odell Beckham Jr. on a team that could win a championship like the Lions, and he can give you that catch that no one else could do in that conference championship game. And so that's my point. That is a good point. And I mean, it wasn't, it kind of feels like it, but it really isn't that long ago that Odell was in the Super Bowl and was going to be the Super Bowl MVP in 2021, or it was actually going into 2022. So we're looking at a little over two calendar years ago when the Rams took down the Bengals. Odell was on track to run away with the Super Bowl MVP, and he was 29. He is 31 now. I am going to go... He's close. Odell is not last for me. I think J.K. Dobbins is last because J.K. has never been healthy. And I do think there's a flash of talent there, but we haven't seen it because he hasn't put together a full season. I'm going to go Tyler Boyd for a couple of the reasons that you mentioned with Odell combined with youth. I don't think Tyler Boyd costs an arm and a leg. I do think he's valuable. He's been the wide receiver three in Cincy for the last couple of years. T. Higgins took over his spot. Jamar comes in and takes over everybody's spot. So it was Jamar, T., and Tyler Boyd. T. Higgins has been franchise tagged. Tyler Boyd is still roaming free. You have somebody in Tyler Boyd who not only has some decent numbers under his belt. If I look here, Tyler Boyd, 1,000-yard receiver in 2018 and 2019. We're looking at a 29-year-old, so he's not extremely younger, but he is two years younger than Odell. Um, He's never, with the exception of one year, gone under 500 yards. And in the last three seasons, he's missed two games. Last four seasons, he's missed four games. So this guy does not go down for the season. You know you're going to get a calm, cool, and collected presence who now has eight years under his belt. And I really do believe he's still pretty cheap. Is he Odell cheap? No. If I had to market value, I'm no general manager, but I'd say eight to 10 million is fair. Uh, Darnell Mooney was 13 million. I wouldn't doubt if they stretched for somebody like that. Darnell is younger, but Tyler Boyd's had some pretty good years. I think Tyler Boyd's a great discount and he hasn't played a big role in a while. So I also think he's still got some miles left on his tank and he could make an immediate impact. I don't put OBJ in last though, because J.K. Dobbins is, just can't stay healthy. And OBJ did have a good year. Yeah, and you know, Jordan on our podcast is a huge Cincinnati Bengals fan and he was sad to see Tyler Boyd leave. He knew it was going to happen. But he knew how valuable he was to that team because to have us... a, a a wide receiver three as good as Tyler Boyd. Boyd could be a two on a lot of teams. Easily. You know, and, you know, as a Lions fan too, I would say like Tyler Boyd, I would love to have a Tyler Boyd on that team because as Lions fans out there, you're looking for anyone to step in that can catch the ball after the end of their season. So any of these guys, Mike Williams, Tyler Boyd, Thomas, or OBJ, is someone that a team like the Lions, if we're talking championship teams, that I have missing pieces, any of these court people I could see being a great threat for a lot of these teams. And from a dynasty perspective, so fantasy in the offseason here, I usually wouldn't suggest like going up and picking up a free agent. I definitely wouldn't trade for him. But if Tyler Boyd's a free agent in your league, 
I really don't care that he doesn't have a team right now. And that sounds odd because he could go anywhere, right? It could be bad. But I would guarantee, as Michael just said, he's probably going to play a bigger role where he goes. It is tough to share a wide receiver room and touches with Jamar Chase and T. Higgins. I would argue wherever he goes at the age of 29, more likely than not, he'll be a two. And if you pick him up and he's a free agent and he's not a two, put him back where you found him. I I don't think you are hurting by giving up your last or second to last bench spot, depending on your league format, by going out and getting somebody like Tyler Boyd, who five years ago was a thousand yard receiver, two years in a row, is durable and just didn't get the touches he would be getting elsewhere because of how loaded the Bengals are. Adam is saying, is Chase still a first round fantasy pick? I definitely do think he is. Not a big believer in the Justin Jefferson rumors because I don't know how much the Bengals are going to be able to pay both of those guys. It'd be cool to have two LSU receivers, but I would say Chase is still a first rounder. Tyree kills a first rounder. Insert a couple more names up here, also first rounders. But yeah, I like Tyler Boyd a lot. He's at 6,000 yards on the nose in eight years. So 750 a year, consistent, healthy. OBJ might not have the health going for him, but as you brought up before, Michael, like if you're looking for a cheap option in the NFL, he's going to have a job. As long as he wants a job, he's going to have a job. And if you're looking for a cheap option in fantasy, like if Tyler Boyd's a free agent and you can't get him because someone snatches him, OBJ is more than likely a free agent as well. So you could also go and grab someone like that. Can he give you a thousand yards? No, but he will have his fair share of good games. So especially if some wide receivers on the team are hurt and he gets to have a greater chance. But yeah, Adam, I think Chase is a first rounder for sure. Michael, it's kind of all I had on the slate. I do like that we just covered so much and had so much in the chat. Thanks for coming on, man. That was that was a lot of fun. You had some good animations. The fireworks. You got fireworks. Woo! <laughs> Come on. That's a good salute to the chat. Um, yeah. yeah, thanks for having me, Corey. Um, great talking with you about sports, talking some shop. It's always a good time. Yeah, so Michael, thanks so much again, man, for coming on. And folks, if you are just stopping in, Michael, first-time visitor, probably won't be the last. This is one of the better streams we've had. So again, thank you all for that. Michael uh, does have a band. He is the lead singer in The Astronomers. We've used their music numerous times on this channel. So it's only right that I A, have him on and B, plug him in the bio. So go in the description, um, click on The Astronomers button. He's also a part of the No Flags podcast. If you're looking for a little more variety, they're covering March Madness. They're covering a little bit of everything. You go click on that and listen to that as well. That way, when I'm not posting, if I'm gone for a day, you've got something else to consume. So, folks, we also have the free Discord in the description. If you're looking for round-the-clock help, you're a dynasty fiend like me, and you're constantly thinking about fantasy football in March, uh, we have the same issues. So we can talk as well. You can go on there. That is absolutely free. Michael, one more time. Thanks so much, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Corey. Of course, of course. Hey, animals saying great show, guys. Yeah, great show, everybody. We will be streaming probably in the next couple of days, depending on what breaks. Otherwise, look out for shorts, look out for videos, and look out for some more guests in the future. This is another Armchair Fantasy Football live stream. I'm Corey. That's Michael. Have a great night, everybody.